Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord, we can come and fellowship your presence and hear your word. And Lord, we thank you for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks, be made for them authority over us. So Lord, we thank for our president, vice president, senators and congressmen, legislators, Supreme Court justice, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, armed forces, FBI, CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim their salvation, deliverance, and protection. They hearken diligent, voice word of God. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness then that you come. Jesus said, the harvest is plenteous, the labors are few. Pray ye, therefore, Lord, harvest you, but send forth the labors harvest. So we thank you, Lord, that every day people are in the body of Christ, are answering the call, and taking the gospel out to all the world. From the top of the world, the bottom world, all the way around the world. That every day more sinners are becoming born again than the day before. And every day more believers being baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking of the tongues, being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, going forth and ruling and reigning in Christ. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today. That I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. And I pray, follow us, Lord, who hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost, that we'll go forth and become doers of your word, led by your Spirit in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for all those missionaries out there, each and every one of them. We thank you, Father God, you meet every one of their needs in abundance in Jesus' name. That you have people to help them, Lord. Ministry of helps, partners, intercessors, co laborers. That you use us, Lord, to help them. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go to the book of Matthew and start here, Matthew chapter 25. And we'll start in verse 14. Matthew chapter 25, beginning verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling in a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And one he had given five talents to another, two, and to another one every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey then he had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them five other talents and likewise he that had received the two he also gained other two but he'd received the one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them and so he that received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful for a few things. I'll make you ruler of many things. Enter now the joy of the Lord. He also received the two talents, came and said, Lord, thou hast deliverest me the two talents. Behold, I've gained two other talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful for a few things, I'll make thee ruler of many things, in thou in the joy of the Lord. Then he'd received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew thou hard, hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered hast not strawed I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in earth, so there thou hast as thine. And the Lord answered and said, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not strawed Thou hast therefore to put my money in exchangers, that at my coming I should receive my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given, and he that shall, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath, uh, hath not shall be taken even that which he hath. Now let's go here to Deuteronomy, please. And let's go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6. Now the scripture says here, being in verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is, your, is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And now, verse 6 of Deuteronomy 6. And these words which I have commanded this day shall be in thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou settest in thy house, and when thou walkest in the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou restest, risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be a frontlet between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and upon thy gates. Now, why in Deuteronomy? Let's go to here. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now the Lord says here in um, verse 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for is he that gives thee the power to get wealth, they may establish his covenant to swore thy fathers, as it is this day. Now let's go over here and read here from uh, the book of Isaiah, please. And we'll go to Isaiah here. Isaiah 45, verse 3 says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by my name, am the God of Israel. Chapter 48, 
Verse 17, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teach thee to profit, which leadeth by the way that thou should go us. Now these scriptures here show us that how important it is for God in our life to see that we prosper and have good health. You know, we have in our new covenant, we have, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. In 3 John verse 2, even your soul prospers. But so often Christians, you know, live beneath their rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Many of the Christians suffer lack and live in, you know, financially they're broke. Or they just live from one paycheck to another. And God never tended for the church to live this way. You know, Jesus came, we might have life and more abundantly. And, you know, he made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, 14 to 29, we've been redeemed from the curse of poverty. But so often, you know, we have this poverty and lack mentality. No, lack and poverty and symptoms of that, when it shows up, you, you want to resist it. You want to refuse it. You want to accept it. You want to stand against it in Jesus' name. And the way you do that is you quote scriptures to it. And you rebuke those thoughts that come to you. And sometimes they'll come with, in form of guilt and condemnation about what you have. And, you know, what about all the people that don't have anything? But you have to realize there's laws of prosperity and there's laws of poverty. You know, as we read through the Bible and study the Word of God, we'll see that, you know, idleness, slothfulness, you know, laziness, procrastination stops prosperity and keeps it from happening in a person's life. You know, people that live in lack need to be taught the gospel. They, Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is born because he's known me to preach the gospel to the poor. So they need to know that they've been redeemed from poverty. Because the scriptures tell us in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, think how he lived. He, he came from heaven. Look how God, God lives extravagant. For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he is rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. But so often and too often, Christians have had that mentality that it, they felt guilty if they had much. Especially you know, when other people were suffering. There's reasons why people suffer. There's reasons why people are poor. And the reason is, first thing is they're ignorant of their covenant as a Christian, of who they are in Christ Jesus. You know, God said in Hosea 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, he said, my people are going to captivity because they have no knowledge. Knowledge of God's word begins to set you free as you put it in action. It's not enough just to learn the word, and that's very important, but to put the word of God in action. Think about this. You know, God told us if we tithe, he wrote, but the windows of heaven pour us out a blessing, there wouldn't be enough room to contain it. That means that there'd be a flood stage in our life. Because he said, bring all the tithes and store us that there may meet my house and prove me now here would say, Lord of hosts, if I will not open you, the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room to receive it. That's a flood of blessings that would come in our life. You know, when it rains a lot, the rivers overflow. They're flooded with water. You know, it starts out by the summertime. Sometimes they get down, they just got a trickle in a stream. But when a boy, when it starts raining, they fill right back up. Well, as believers, we're to live in abundance in every area of our life. But we have to have that kind of mindset and that mentality. And we don't think anything different other than God wants me to live prosperous and have good health. But see, so often we were, and for too long, we were taught God gets glory of us being sick. You know, God wants us to suffer sick disease. I mean, either directly or indirectly, that's what we were told. But we didn't know the Bible. We didn't know our covenant. We have a better covenant established on better promises. And all these blessings belong to us. I mean, why did this man, he had one talent. He didn't use what he had. He got rebuked by the Lord. But the other man that had the five talents, he made five more. And the other one had two, made two more. They invested what they had, and they ended up getting assets. But the one that had the one, you know, didn't tell the truth about God. That's a lie. God's not hard like that. And that was his image, supposedly, that he had it again. Plus, he was afraid. And many times people don't succeed as Christians because of fear. Fear of the unfamiliar. Fear of the unknown. Fear of hearing something they haven't heard before. You know, they get a mindset that just whatever they heard in church, that's just all they, that they really believe in. And you can, it's kind of, you know, sometimes churches get kind of cultish. But nevertheless, you, as a believer, you always want to educate yourself. Every day you're feeding on God's word. And you're teaching your children, your family this. I mean, think about this, what God told the, the Jewish people. How much, you know, when you sit down, when you rise up, 
when you go to bed, you, 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 t t you tell them what my word says. And children need to be taught this way. They need to be taught in regards to finances. They need to be taught about prosperity, not just balancing a checkbook, but how to get assets in their life, how to prosper. See, God wants the church wealthy. That's, that supports the gospel. Too many people are suffering today as missionaries, and the work of God has suffered because the church was not prosperous like she should have been. And every, if everybody in, in the body of Christ would tithe and give, it would help the work of God immensely. But so many dear pastors, so many churches, and, and so many dear missionaries you know, suffer. One reason is because they don't know what belongs to them in Christ Jesus. They don't resist the lack. And we want to resist it. Just like you would pain in your body, we'd begin to resist it. You'd say something to it. You'd tell it to leave. You'd say, I don't accept it. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't want to walk around the house, keep rubbing your thumb and wonder what's wrong with your thumb. No, first of all, talk to your thumb. If pain shows up or some, you know, alarming symptoms show up, the first thing you want to do is say something to it. You know, not to open up your mouth and use your authority is dangerous. It can cost you your life. Your first words come out of your mouth must be resisting this and refusing this. I, I don't accept it in the name of Jesus. I stand against this. It's written, no evil should befall me, no shall plague come not my dwelling. Christ has redeemed the curse of the law, being made a curse for me, for it's written, curse serving free. I refuse this, Jesus name. This is a curse. I, you can't come on my body in the name of Jesus. You can't touch my thumb in Jesus name, or whatever it be. Immediately use our authority first. But what happens is people don't do that. They want, you know, we've all been guilty of it, but the wander around and wonder what that is, keep rubbing their thumb, rub their thumb, and then put some ice on it, then, you know, put, maybe put some heat on it. No, do you put heat on it? Do you put ice on it? Now it gets kind of confusing. Well, you no, know, the first thing, and thank God for all those things, but the first thing you want to do is say, no, I refuse this. You can't come on me in Jesus' name. Don't accept it. Stand against it. Refuse it. How? With your mouth. Use your mouth. Engage your mouth. Use words to come out your mouth. Speak to this situation in the name of Jesus. Look what Jesus did and they woke him up in the middle of the storm. First thing Jesus did, he spoke to it. This isn't a time to start wondering if I'm in God's will or not. Or maybe God sent this to teach us something, get closer to him. The storm came to take him out. And a house divided should not, cannot stand. This, all, this stuff comes from Satan, who's been defeated. So what we do is we don't, we don't accept anything he brings. If it's stealing, killing, destroying, it's Satan. If it's blessings, it's God. And that helped me out when I got born again, because, you know, people have, they say all, things, all kinds of things at God, you know, about God. But what does the Word teach? What's our new covenant teach us? What Jesus redeemed us from. We're not to suffer, and we're not to suffer financially. And we need to take authority over that money and tell it to come and not say anything about money. You know, in a derogatory way, in a negative way. You know, people, people say things about money, and, and it causes money not to be attracted to them by what, they, by what they say. It stops it from coming to them in abundance. It just comes to them in a trickle and just barely get their needs met. But gee, God has much more. He has abundance, a, a, a abundant covenant he's given us of prosperity. He wants wealth and riches in our house. He'd like to lavish abundance and blessings upon us if we freely receive them and have that kind of idea and mindset. But see, so often we were told, directly or indirectly, that, you know, put a guilt trip on us because we had a lot. And we shouldn't do that because there's people suffering around the world. There's reasons why the people suffer. They haven't been taught the gospel. And they have to be taught how to take authority over finances. I mean, you keep throwing money at it to make you feel better because you gave them money. And praise God, we're taught to give and help the poor. But the point is, are we helping them? Is there being a change? And the idea is, if you're not getting results, you got to change. The idea we have God's Word in the Bible is to get results. And we need to use our authority. And by what people heard, it affected them. So now when you start hearing about prosperity and good health, and you've had all these years and all this time, God doesn't always heal. You know, my mom had this, my dad had this, they loved the Lord, and they went to church. And you go down that road, you're, that's just victim mentality. It's too bad. Mom and dad had whatever they had. It was negative. But thank God, that doesn't change what Jesus did for us. And you just have to be that kind of hard cold, cold against anything that's a curse. You have to stand against it. You can't be passive. You cannot be a weak Christian and live in victory. You must make yourself strong. You must get confidence. Now, if you don't have any confidence, you can develop confidence. 
It's going to come by renewing your mind to God's word and make yourself do things that's unfamiliar, uncomfortable. Open up your mind to teaching that teaches you how to prosper and have good health. But people don't want to get out of their, their comfort zone. They get caught up in their little church or big church, whatever it is, you know. And that's just, their whole mentality is that's it, just going to church. There's much more to that than just going to church. And I pastor. There's much more to that. You want to get in God's Word and learn and study and show yourself that you're teaching yourself God's Word, that you have this attitude. If it's going to happen, it's, going to, it's up to me to get this done. Take full responsibility for your life and maximize the potential that God gave you. Do like the guy that had the five talents. Just keep it increasing. I mean, everything in the world today is anti-prosperity. All they want to do is make people, their billionaires, feel bad. They got all this money and people are suffering. But again, it goes about what kind of knowledge you have. And it's interesting, interesting that people that are homeless, they don't, they don't read. You could go to the free library and get free material. And some people got the place that is content for being homeless and going without it. I've dealt with a lot of people. I got experience in this area. And you run across this. And it can be so frustrating. You're trying to get this person not to have to live underneath the bridge. Now, there's some people got mental problems. Some people, you know have a mental disease well thank god for healing but there are percentage there's usually there's this divided up in thirds of homeless people one third is mental issues another third is vets that weren't you know weren't treated right or veterans and another one is just pure laziness well the ones that's lazy we can teach them to work god's word the ones that have the mental problem we believe god for the healing and have compassion on our veterans well but all everybody needs god's word and stand up on God's word. But people make excuses. I mean, I know a guy has was born, has no arms and has no legs. But today he's worth a few million dollars and he's got four kids. And he goes around the world giving his, you know, his speech, his lecture, is how he how he went on. So you see, if you you can use anything for excuse, it'd be terrible to live that way. And I'm thanking God he's healed in Jesus' name. He's got arms and legs. But people use excuses. So what this man do had the one talent. He has this poverty mentality. He thinks God's, he lies about God. Well, he realizes they're not. God is not hard. And he said he's afraid and he went and hit his Lord's money. He didn't use it. And Lord, let me, you could have put in a bank and drawn interest, but he wouldn't even do that. And perhaps that people get very stubborn with po poverty. There's a reason why people are broke. And money is not going to be the answer to the situation if the person doesn't have knowledge of how to handle the money. You know, I did floor covering. And uh, then I got born again. And I had two or three guys working for me. You know, we did floor covering. Sometimes we do churches and schools and, you know, um, you know, hotels and all that. But also residential houses. Anyways, I got born again. And I got Brother Culpa's tapes and Laws of Prosperity. These guys, they're going all the time. I, I walk out the door with my tape player and my Bible. And I'll come, when I come back to home and work tonight... And we're working like 18 hours a day, six days a week for probably four or five, probably more than maybe seven years. But anyway, so I come to the warehouse one day to load up for start today out. And the, some manager of the carpet store said, hey, there's a guy I want to see. Once He's came here looking for a job. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to hire anybody else. My payroll is already too, way too much. And for, you know, cause, anyways, but you kind of keep, you, you want to keep them. Anyway, because you kind of feel for him. But anyway, so I go to the warehouse, and they meet this guy. His name's Tom. And so I, he's talking. He's looking for a job. When, and, you know, when he's talking, the Lord tells him, what's your hurry? I thought, oh, man, praise the Lord. Okay, so we go out and start doing jobs. Now, this tape player I got is playing all the time. My daughter's first sentence was, please turn the tape over for the conclusion. Now, that made people mad because they thought this, she's getting whacked out into religion. I'm not into religion. And I'm not weird. I'm trying to get the word in me. You know, this is why I'm listening to this. I need to get rid of this brainwashing I've had of the mentality that I was taught as growing up in church. So I'm going to keep blasting it with the word of God. Anyway, now these guys aren't saved. This working for me. So they don't like this. They want to listen to radio. They want Kiss FM or something on all the time. So now and then they get a little mutiny going. They get a speaker, you know, sort of like a union. And somebody's going to come to me and tell me they won't listen to these anymore. So I just said, well, then go work somewhere else. But this is going to keep playing. You know why? Why? 
Because I keep me build up. We don't keep Jesse build up. You won't have a job. So we got to take care of Jesse. The way Jesse stays built up, he listens to these tapes. If you don't take care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. So you get yourself jacked up in God's word and get built up so you can handle everybody else. Because you, you, you want to make sure that, you, you know, you start the day out getting you built up so you can face the day. And you'll, you'll, you, it, when you end the day and you come back home or whatever you do, at least you know if you did your time in the Bible this morning like you're supposed to do, how much time that is, the older you get, it's more time, then you, at least you know you got that accomplished. But leaving the house and neglecting Bible time is wrong. You want to get yourself started out in God's Word. So the Lord does about ha ha hiring Tom. And Tom ends up, he's, he's incredible in floor covering. He can do ceramic tile, vinyl tile. You know, he can do like place like Stop and Shop, okay? Think how big that is. And it's done. So, and pl places like that. One time we this big job at, of this tennis court place, this uh, country club like place. We had to do with ceramic tile, ceramic tile on the ceiling, ceramic tile on the wall, huge, gigantic showers. He did awesome. Well, I'd hired him because the Lord told me to hire him. Well, anyway, so he's listening to these tapes all the time. Now, he hasn't been to church except for the religious thing like Easter, whatever you call it, Christmas maybe, a wedding. So he doesn't know anything. So he's listening to Brother Colton, he's prosperity all the time. Whether he wants to listen to it or not, it keeps on going. And there'd be a lot of guys that were construction. They, they they hated those tapes, man. They'd come around the plumber's wood and the painters, you know, and tell me to shut this thing off. I said, well, you're not supposed to be here today. I'm scheduled to be here today. You should have had this done. I'm just doing you a favor by letting you come in the house or whatever bill need to do this. You know, kind of back them down. Because they're going to play Kiss FM. You know, it's it's not, it's, it's noisy. I said, well, it's not the noise. It's the kind of noise. Because the radio's going, it's okay. And I'm supposed to be here. So since I'm supposed to be here, we're going to listen to what I want to listen to. And this is what I want to listen to. You got that, Harold? So anyway, this is going on. And so Tom's listening to this. Well, Tom ends up getting born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Now his wife's an atheist. And his mother and father-in-law are atheists. Never, his mother and father-in-law have never been to church before. And they're, you know, kind of proud they're atheists. Well, anytime Tom gets born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, I take the Brother Haynes camp meeting, and he, he's blind in one eye. And when he put his offering, took his offering, they had to put, take it down on a platform, and Oval Hayes was even an offering for Rama. And Tom took what money he had and put it up there. When he turned around, he looked up the flag. And the Civic Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He looked up the flag, and he took his hand, his hand put over his good eye, and he could see the stars with his blind eye that had been blind. It had been damaged, a kid damaged it with a stick when he was a little child. Stuck a stick in it. You know, it looked like a cobweb. So Tom got his eye. So Norval has him get up on the platform and give his testimony. Now, less than two months, I'm a, Tom and I are partying because I'm partying because I'm going to Bible school. So I want to make sure I get him at Brother Ang's camp. He's never been something like this. And before I leave, before we part company, I'm going to move to Tulsa and he's going to stay where he's at. So anyway, so Tom gets this new eye. And later on, I got to talk to Norval about it. Later on, I got to talk to Brother Hagin. I mean, years later. I brought that up about you know, if they remember that happened. They did. But anyway, so he got this new eye. Now, all he's heard is Kenneth Copeland teach the laws of prosperity in Brother Copeland's tapes. So one day, I had one cassette tape player. See, today it's CD player, in case you haven't heard of cassettes. So I had one tape player and one I just got a new set of Brother Copeland's tapes in. And Tom is going to put ceramic tile in this house, in a bathroom. He's got a couple of bathrooms to do, okay? Now, I want you to get this picture. So I get the tapes. They're in, the, in my van. We're, we're, right, we're driving over to this job site. And Tom looks down and sees these new tapes for Brother Copeland. So, all right, we get there. And I'm going to drop him off, leave all the tile equipment, ceramic tile equipment, saws and everything. So he'll have that, no cell phones, and I gotta drive to go to another house that has no phones in either one of these places to do another job. So we gotta make sure we got everything he's gonna need. So we don't, you know, I don't have to come back and he's not done because, he, you know, I didn't leave the mastic or whatever. Something like that would happen. So <laughs> we're stuck to taking all this out. So we go in there and checking out the house, new construction. Tom's gonna do the tile. And Tom says, hey, Jesse, uh, can I have the tape player and tapes? Oh. 
Man, I, uh, I was so reluctant to give him to him, but he just got born again. I thought, you know, I got to help him grow. That means I'm going to be in his house, this other house, all day long with nothing. And I'm addicted to God's word. You feed an addiction. And I'm going to be there all day long without this. Hearing something in the background. You know, thank God I can pray in tongues to worship God, and I'm going to do that. Okay, you know, you act happy to do it. <laughs> so I'd leave him with those tapes and that tape player. Brand new set of tapes. I have got to hear them. I don't know what's on them yet. And so Ed, the, the drywall guy, comes to the, I'm gone. He's kind of stayed away from me. So I leave, and Tom is putting down in the ceramic. Now, um, Ed, the drywall guy, is born again, and he goes to some kind of strange church. that I don't know. It's kind of weird what they believe. And you'd find that out with construction guys. Some of them were born again, but some of them have some real weird churches. So it sounded like a little cultish thing, you know. So anyway, so he stays kind of away from me. So Tom tells me later on that Ed came by and starts talking to him, trying to convert him. Now, if Tom's already born again, baptized the Holy Spirit, plus he's like Stephen Seagal in martial arts. So, you know, he's strong in both areas. And all he's ever heard is prosperity talk. So Ed comes in, you know, he's a kind of a whining victim Christian mentality. He starts talking to Tom. And Tom just quotes scripture to the guy. <laughs> and Tom just got born again a few months ago. He starts telling, I hear, I hear this later on. He said, yeah, he said this, and I told him this. He said this, and I gave him this scripture. He said this, and I gave him this verse. You know? And he backed him down and got, you know, almost got Ed converted to believe in the Bible. So anyway, so Tom's, that's what's going on that day. So I come back later on at night. Now Tom's inside a tub and he's putting tile up like this. All right, and he's got the, I hear the tape player going. He's in standing inside the tub, putting the back wall up. And I come in and he goes, Rich, you gotta hear this. And he rewinds the tape. Listen to the story of Brother Copeland. That's it. Brother Copeland's telling the story about, he was invited to go back, he just got, I mean, some, I think he's in Bible school, uh, college. And some guy came over and, start, and called him and said, Kenneth, you need to come over. I got a demon-possessed guy. Well, Brother Copeland had experience with some demon-possessed woman, and she scared him in the hospital, so he ran out, left the hospital. I mean, he was a, he'd been a fighter. He, you know, this guy's not, he's no girl. So, and with, thank God for girls. So, uh, not that they're weak. So he's, he left, and he said, oh, God, I feel so bad about this. I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to run away from a demon-possessed person, but she scared him. So his friend of him calls him up. She Kenneth, get over. I got a demon-possessed person. So Brother Copeland goes over to this guy's house. <laughs> and that's what Tom's playing to me. He's telling, praying this story. See, martial arts was, was a big deal to Tom and fighting. Now, he's hearing Brother Copeland. Brother Copeland sounds like a real man to him. So this really helped Brother, uh, Tom. So Tom rewinds the tape. And he, we're playing a story. Now, all the time, I'm trying to, I'm trying to act like, not act like I'm jealous that he heard something before I did because I haven't even heard this. Uh, and I left him the new tapes. So he's teaching me now. So he rewinds it, and Brother Copeland talks about it. I go over there, and I just start putting my hand on that guy that's demon-possessed, demon and that man hit me so hard with his fist. And he said, before I know it, I hid him back and knocked him into the drywall and stuck him inside the drywall. I had to go there and pull him out of the drywall, throw him on the ground, and cast, I don't know, like nine demons out of him. But the guy that invited me over was going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh my. You could all accept them because Brother Copeland beat the guy up. <laughs> so finally, Brother Copeland said, you know, that's not the way to cast the devil out either. First, I ran from the devil, and I almost beat this guy to a pulp, you know. So Tom heard that story. Mr. Martial Arts, Mr. Steven Seagal heard that story. That really changed Tom's life. So it comes time that, you know, I got to leave to go to Bible school. So I've, you know, kind of done what I could. I believed I was supposed to hire him and took him to that camp meeting and, and prodded him along with the Word of God. And now he's, the guy's advancing me. So I've been to church all my life. I'm unlearning stuff. This is all new to me, listen to tapes. And Tom's never been to church, so this is all brand new. Well, here goes. I leave. I'm leaving. Tom gets this incredible job offer from, Keller, or from uh, Keller Tile, and they paid him like three times of what I paid him. And they gave him a new van. I put it in his name. If you come and work for us. Here's your, he got this van. He picked out the van, Ford van, and also gave him all this money. 
and gave him flexibility. He's got almost on flex time. They just want him working. He's that good. His father-in-law, who is an atheist, gave to Tom and loves it. And his father-in-law loves his daughter, Dana. But he gave a four-family house to Tom, free, signed it over to him. And he got, so by the time I'm going to Bible school, Tom got a new eye, saved, baptized Holy Spirit, a new eye. He got this four-family house that can make income because he's now he learned how to make assets. He got his bills paid off. There were back paid bills paid off. And not only that, he got this super credible job he got. I mean, he was like a hero, these people. They thought it and doing come to do it in tile and ceramic. Just, just thrilled to get him, Keller Tile was. And his wife had came home because he left the tape player and left in the kitchen, didn't bring it to work. I had to go to a hardware store and buy a tape player. We can't go all day long without a tape player. So, and I'm yelling at him because he left it home, but she came home, pushed play on the tape player on her lunch hour, you know, like she's fixing a grilled cheese or something, and she hears someone preaching. She got on her knees, never been to church, got an atheist. Her parents were atheists, got on her knees in the kitchen and received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and came back and told her husband that she got born again. You left the tape player there, and I just want to listen. To, I want to listen to what you've been listening to, so I thought I'd just check out what you're listening to, and she got convicted and received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Wow. That guy passed me up. The difference was... He's never heard that God doesn't want you to prosper. All he heard, he doesn't know nothing. He's just hearing Brother Copeland teach about the laws of prosperity and hearing all these scriptures. That's what happened to him. That's how fast a person grow if they don't have to unlearn anything. But see, many of us heard God doesn't always heal. God doesn't do this. Tom had heard the, the, the miracles have passed away. But list those tapes changed all that. Praise God. That's what listening to the Word of God will do. Now, some of us have a lot of stuff we have to unlearn. But we need to pick up the pace on it and go to work on it and get delete all that crap out of our mind and heart that we've had that God wants us to suffer what Jesus suffered for us. We suffer persecution. We don't have to brag about it. But we don't suffer anything Jesus suffered for us. Father God, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you teach us to prosper and profit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, you promise wealth and rich in our house. That we'll not be ashamed of what you do for us or embarrassed, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Tom hadn't, and he'd been listening to those tapes, and he made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Someone prayed with him. He got born again. Now, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, Verse 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believes righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's pray this together. God, I come to you today. Just say it out your mouth. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe he is raised from the dead. And when he is on the cross, he took all my sins. Thank you, Father God, for saving me. Jesus, you're my Lord. I receive you today. And God, take my life and use it for your glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to encourage you. You can watch every day like this on Facebook and on YouTube. Our messages to help you grow and develop spiritually. If you've got a prayer request, you can contact us at JustRichMinistries.com. Also, we have the call in in the evening at 7 o'clock. You can listen to the word be taught then. I think one of the most exciting things I've ever experienced is Tom, when he jumped out of that bathtub like a little kid and wanted me to hear the story, I thought, wow, how excited he was to hear this story and couldn't wait to play it for me. That was so worth it to see him so turned on to Jesus, who when he walked in and I met him in the warehouse, he was a tough guy and end up being used by God and blessed by God. Because he just simply changed the image at himself of a failure and saw himself in Christ Jesus. Praise God for that. Enjoy being with you today. I want to encourage you to keep speaking God's word. Till next time, it's Brother Rich. We love you. Praying for you. Remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.